and animation. On-screen text. Screening for substance use and child welfare using the UNCOPE. Logo, National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare. Screening tools are an important part of family safety and risk assessments completed by frontline child welfare staff. They help determine if a parent or family should be referred for additional assessment, such as for substance use issues. Standardized, validated screening tools can aid frontline staff in facilitating difficult conversations, lessening personal bias and stigma, and making referrals to necessary services in a timely manner. The information presented in this video introduces how one screening tool, the UNCOPE, can be incorporated into your daily child welfare practice. Developed by Dr. Norman Hoffman and colleagues, the UNCOPE is a six-question screening tool used in many settings to detect if a person needs a substance use assessment. In child welfare, Caseworkers completing family safety and risk assessments can use this screening tool in their practice, even if factors related to substance use are not known or suspected. The UNCOPE is easy to use and score. A score of two or more yes responses indicates the need for a substance use assessment. After asking the questions aloud, the child welfare caseworker adds up the yes answers, each having a value of one. Here are the questions that make up the UNCOPE. You. Have you continued to use alcohol or drugs longer than you intended? N. Have you ever neglected some of your usual responsibilities because of alcohol or drug use? C. Have you ever wanted to cut down or stop using alcohol or drugs but couldn't? O. Has your family, a friend, or anyone else ever told you they objected to your alcohol or drug use? P. Have you ever found yourself preoccupied with wanting to use alcohol or drugs? E. Have you ever used alcohol or drugs to relieve emotional discomfort, such as sadness, anger, or boredom? Now, let's hear from David, a child welfare worker, who will tell you about how he used the UNCOPE in a typical situation. Hi. Our local child welfare office received a report about the safety of Carter, age four, and Adrian, age three months. The report alleges that Miranda, who is a single mom, is using drugs and is not appropriately supervising the children. The report indicates that Carter has been seen on multiple mornings outside by himself a couple of houses away and is not dressed appropriately for the weather. The report also alleges that the home is unclean and there is no food in the home. The reporter also stated Adrian has been ill and has not seen a physician since his release from the hospital at birth. As the assigned child welfare worker, I responded to the home to see Adrian, Carter, and Miranda as part of the initiation of the report. Miranda was surprised to learn that she had been referred to child welfare and said that she hadn't neglected her children. Miranda's response was reserved, but I spent time building rapport with her, asking her about Carter and Adrian, and talking to her about being a new mom to Adrian. Miranda was happy to show me the apartment, where I observed some clutter and very little food, there was a crib and toddler bed which Miranda said her mother helped her purchase. I went on to explain the role of child welfare in the process of child welfare's family safety and risk assessment, and Miranda agreed to answer some questions. In my experience, using a motivational interviewing approach with parents is helpful. Remaining non-judgmental, asking open-ended questions, and reflecting on what Miranda says helped her feel comfortable talking. David sits in the cluttered living room with Miranda. We're coming to the end of the questions, and the last thing I want to ask you about is substance use. Is that okay? I guess it's okay. Okay, if you don't mind, tell me about your history of alcohol and substance use. What else do you want to know? You said you got called because someone said I was using drugs and neglecting my kids. You're right, but I don't want to make any assumptions about anything. I'd like to hear from you about why that is, if you're okay with that. What else do you want to know? Well, maybe if we think about it like a timeline. 
you can start from the very beginning, like the very first time that you drank or used anything, and then kind of go from there. Okay. Well, I think I drank alcohol for the first time in high school, but that was just once, and I didn't really do anything else. And then I smoked pot for the first time in high school with some friends, but I didn't like it. Is this the sort of thing you want me to talk about? Yes, thank you for sharing that. So you drank and smoked for the first time in high school. Would you say that you were experimenting in high school? Yeah, I guess you could call it that because I really didn't do it again. When would you say that it got more frequent? I guess it was a few years ago. Tell me what happened then. I was in a car accident and I hurt my back. I went to the doctor for a little while and they prescribed some pain pills and told me to go to physical therapy. But when I didn't go, they stopped prescribing the medicine to me and my back still hurt. It wasn't that I didn't want to go to physical therapy. I just couldn't afford it, so I didn't go. My insurance wasn't good and even with it, it was still too expensive for me. The pain pills did help with my back pain though and they helped me not be in pain while I was at work, so I just started buying them from people at work. I work in a restaurant, and I have to carry heavy things, so being in that much pain was not an option. I really didn't think it was going to become a huge problem because I was already on the same pills from the doctor, but then I started to need more. It sounds like that was a really hard time in your life, to not be able to afford to get the care that your doctor said you needed, and you were trying to make things work. And you were still able to work despite the pain that you were in? Yeah, it was really hard. So I started just buying those pills, and it was fine at first, but then I started needing more and more pills. And then, you know, somebody said they had something else that might be more helpful, and I guess it had fentanyl in it, and I couldn't stop. I don't know what happened. It just got out of control so fast. I did try a methadone program, but stopped going there after a few weeks. You. Use. I know it's not easy to talk about all this, would you say that you've spent more time using than you intended to? Yes. And neglect. And has your use ever led you to neglect some of your usual responsibilities? I don't think so. I mean, I've missed work every now and then, but they still let me keep my job. I don't think they knew everything that was going on, though. You missed work a few times, but because your job didn't know the full details of what was going on, you were able to keep working there. Even though it sounds like you're saying that maybe your use did have something to do with missing work every now and then? Right. Well, I just said that because I didn't think it mattered since my boss didn't know what was going on. But yeah, I guess you could say that sometimes I missed work because I was sick in the morning from using or not using. C. Cut down. Thanks for telling me more about that. A little earlier, we talked about you entering a methadone program. Was that because you felt like you wanted to cut down on your use? Definitely. I mean, that's why I got on methadone when I found out I was pregnant. I wanted to have a healthy baby, and I didn't want to keep living the way I've been living. I've just still been struggling with using. I learned about meetings at the clinic, and I even tried to go to one for some help, but I didn't really like it. That's great that you reached out for help. Is there anything else you've tried? Um, so there was the meeting. Also, the clinic has groups, but it was hard to make those. They're for, like, support or whatever. Well, that's a lot. Anything else? It's not about drugs, but my doctor's office sent me to this other program for new moms. It's for people who are pregnant, and then they keep working with you after your baby is born and teach you about things to do with your baby and stuff. That's excellent. It sounds like you really liked that one. I did, but I stopped going to that program because it was really hard to get there. It's great you found something helpful and sounds like something you enjoyed. Oh, objected. Earlier, you said you didn't think your work knew everything that was going on, but have you had any family members, friends, or anybody else that ever told you they objected to your using? I don't know if I'd say my mom objected to it but she has definitely tried to get me to stop using it. She just tells me she loves me a lot and tries to help me out. She tried to send me to treatment once, but I really don't want to go. It sounds like your mom is definitely supportive of you and wants to help you. Yeah, I'm so grateful for her. I don't know where I'd be without her sometimes. Did you end up going to treatment when she set that up for you? No. 
Is that bad? No, I wouldn't say it's bad. I just wanted to be sure I was understanding everything clearly. All right, we're almost done. P, preoccupied. Just a couple more questions. So you said earlier that in the beginning, the pills helped you with your pain, but eventually you had to start using more or taking something different. Have you found yourself thinking a lot about using? I think about it a lot if I don't have anything or if I start feeling sick. But other than that, if I'm good, I'm good. E, emotional discomfort. Okay. And last question. Have you ever used alcohol or drugs to relieve emotional discomfort? And by that, I mean things like sadness, anger, or boredom? No. Thanks for answering all those questions. I know I asked a lot of really personal stuff. Is there anything that you want to tell me that I didn't ask about? I don't think so. All right, Miranda. Thanks for sharing so much with me. It was really helpful. I'll summarize what we talked about to make sure I've gotten it all right. From what you told me, your substance abuse didn't become problematic for you until a few years ago after you got in a car accident. At that time, you did receive care from your doctor, which included pain medication and a referral to physical therapy, but ultimately, you couldn't afford the ongoing care that was recommended. To manage your own pain, you began buying the same medication you were originally prescribed by your doctor, but you found yourself needing more and more of the medication for pain relief, and you believe that eventually the substance you were buying had fentanyl in it. In the meantime... You and your mom recognized that something wasn't quite right, and you ultimately sought treatment for yourself at the methadone clinic once you found out you were pregnant, but weren't able to keep going, and stopping use altogether has still been challenging. Did I get all that right? Is there anything I'm missing? That seems like everything. I just wanted to add, too, that I notice how attentive you are to Adrian, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about him his care, and showing me his room at home. Everything you've done and keep doing is going to help you to be the mom you want to be. I'm thinking of something else that might help you. Do you mind if we talk a little about next steps? Because if I can share some things with you that really... After finishing my conversation with Miranda, I tallied Miranda's yes responses. I quickly determined that she answered yes to the first five of the six questions for a score of five. Because she answered yes to more than two questions, I let her know that I'd like to help her set up a substance use assessment. She agreed, and together we called the local substance use disorder treatment agency to schedule an appointment. I also arranged transportation for her to attend the appointments. Once back at the office, my supervisor and I had clinical supervision, where I shared the UNCOPE results when we discussed the case. Incorporating the UNCOPE into the Family Safety and Risk Assessment helped the child welfare worker ask Miranda directed questions about substance use. As a result, the child welfare worker identified that Miranda needed a referral for a substance use assessment. The UNCOPE results and responses to the questions also help inform the conversations between the supervisor and worker on safety threats, risk and protective factors, and any services or support the family needs. The supervisor can be certain that the caseworker follows up to know if Miranda kept the appointment for the substance use assessment and that consent for the treatment agency to communicate with David was obtained. Two QR codes at the top of the screen. Understanding Screening and Assessment of Substance Use Disorders, Child Welfare Practice Tips. At the bottom of the screen, Screening and Assessment for Family Engagement, Retention, and Recovery Open Brace SAFERR Close Braced. For more information about screening, download these resources or contact the NCSACW. On screen text, National Center on Substance and Child Welfare. Visit our website https colon slash slash ncsacw.acf.hhs.govern or email us ncsacw at cffutures.org or call 1-866-493-2758. QR code on the right side of the screen.
This motion graphic is supported by contract number 75S20422C0001 from the Children's Bureau Open Brace CB Close Brace, Administration for Children and Families Open Brace ACF Close Brace, co-funded by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Open Brace FSA Close Brace. The views, opinions, and content of this motion graphic are those of the presenters and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of ACF, SFSA or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Open Brace HHS Close Brace. Logos, ACF Children's Bureau, SFSA, Substance Abuse, and Mental Health Services Administration.